And, and the other major impact is pollution. The entire system of goods movement from uh, when a container arrives on a, a ship to when it gets put on a train to get when it gets put on a truck, sure. it all runs on diesel fuel. Mm -hmm. Diesel exhaust, that sort of puff of black smoke that sometimes you see, um, that sometimes can be quite large coming mm -hmm. out of a rail, uh, a rail car or uh, coming out of the uh, tailpipe or the exhaust of a truck, um, that that exhaust is a number one toxic air contaminant in California. Mm -hmm. Seventy percent of all airborne cancer risk is due to diesel pollution. Phenomenal. Wow. It's a phenomenal statistic. And uh, diesel pollution, we know, causes cancer. It's also linked to heart disease and other respiratory problems. What we've recently been finding out is that it not only makes asthma worse, but can actually cause asthma in um, people that otherwise didn't have asthma. And what we're finding around um, these ports is uh, higher incidence of asthma, of, of cancer. Mm. And so it's it, it basically you know, all of the things that we had suspected are, are sort of coming true, and we can see that. Um, in West Oakland, which is um, neighbor to the Port of Oakland, mm -hmm. West Oakland children are seven times more likely to be hospitalized for asthma oh, than geez. the average child in the state of California. So, um, and that means a lot. It's not only uh, sort of the health problems because of it, but um, the fact that these kids are missing school, that their parents are missing work, sort of all of the things around it. That um, so it's it's the health problems, it's the pollution, it's the noise, it's the light, it's all of those things that these communities are facing. And when we're talking about a doubling or tripling in trade, um, the impacts in these communities are projected to worsen. Boy, uh, we're coming up to a break, but um, we, so far we've talked about uh, the point of entrance in the ports. Let's talk about what happens as we get into the interior of the United States, the point of distribution in all of these mm -hmm. goods and what the effects are. So we'll take the break and we'll come on back. So stick around as we continue our discussion. Interesting one at that. everybody and welcome back to the show as we continue our talk about what it's costing environmentally speaking uh, citizens and also the land as goods are coming in from all over the world and as we transport them across the United States it's taking a toll on the environment and uh, Mina here from the Pacific Institute which is a think tank in the west coast of the United States is here and has been doing a good job at helping to describe what the issues are and um, I'm sure a lot of people have been able to pick up that yeah there's been an increase in um, you know, in the deliveries of, of goods. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you were mentioning some of the big wigs like uh, Walmart and all. Uh, our, this country loves big box mm -hmm. retail. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that goods are delivered, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, your question before the break on sort of how is this emanating from the ports to the interior mm -hmm. is a really good question. Actually, 60% of the imported goods consumed in Chicago come in through the port of LA Long Beach. So these goods are d making a really long uh, mm -hmm. train ride through the interior all the way to Chicago, and Chicago is a major hub for rail. And so all of um, sort of the pollution pro problems that we're talking about at the ports are just the same in the interior. And people um, in the interior near these big box stores um, and near these distribution centers are facing the same impacts um, from diesel pollution, from trucks dropping off and picking up and, um, and rail idling and, and all of those things. So mm -hmm. it's a problem throughout the country. It's yeah. a problem throughout the country. And uh, your, your comment about sort of we're seeing a lot more containers on the road is absolutely right. What we've seen um, is a few years ago, uh, we hadn't, we, uh, for, for, for a while we had an agreement on textiles and trade, mm -hmm. um, which limited the import of textiles from China through the World Trade Organization. Uh, that expired a few years ago. So all of a sudden, we're having this huge influx in um, textiles from China. Um, the Chinese economy uh, is booming. There are a lot of factories coming online. Uh, and all of, the, all of that is being shipped to, um, to the U.S., um, often through California ports. So uh, it's, we're, we're just basically, uh, the economy is changing in the U.S. from um, a manufacturing economy to a service economy. And our manufacturing has um, 
been shipped overseas. And so um, things are being manufactured in Vietnam, Thailand, China, uh, and, they, and they need to travel through the U.S. to get to where people are buying them. Yeah. What would be some of the uh, specific um, ill effects? You've already mentioned some of them, but um, uh, and stretch those right across the line. You know, I mean, the same effects, I guess, are being felt in Kansas as they are um, when these goods first arrive into um, the coastal United States, whether it's Long Beach or Oakland or New Orleans or whatever. Um, I guess that we're seeing the same effects. What are those? You mentioned already the increase in cancer rates mm -hmm. um, near these areas. Um, and the asthma, that's, mm -hmm. that's wild. I mean, it's something that's, that's just incredible. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we would see that actually. Uh, uh, marine ports, certainly, we see sort of um, these increases in health impacts, but around distribution centers. So, so mm -hmm. if you have a, um, a Kroger's or an Albertsons or a Safeway distribution center where there are a lot of trucks coming in and out, mm -hmm. um, that's also sort of a hub for diesel pollution. And you would see um, those same impacts, you know, 500 feet away where you have a lot of diesel soot in the air um, that people are, uh, what happens with diesel soot is that some of it you can see, it's sort of black and in mm -hmm. the air, and some of it is, is very, very microscopic. You can't see it. And these particles get drawn deep into your lungs, and they're so, so minute that they can actually uh, interact directly with your bloodstream, so bring toxic chemicals directly into your bloodstream. Um, and so that's uh, the problem with diesel pollution. And for Many, many decades, it's been underregulated in the United States. Um, it's been because of the power of the Engine Manufacturers Association, the power of different lobbies in the goods movement industry. Mm -hmm. um, but while we you know, saw standards that were reducing the amount of pollution coming out of cars, uh, you still see black soot coming out of trucks and out of, tra out of trains and um, out of ships. And so it's uh, been an industry that's been underregulated in the mm -hmm. past. Um, in fact, there's a really uh, quite a funny c quote from a South Coast air quality um, uh, management official uh, who said, uh, your underarm deodorant is more regulated <laughs> than, uh, than goods movement. So it's, uh, it, it's, just, uh, it's just unbelievable how um, polluting and um, unsafe for health um, this industry is and how underregulated it's been. Um, and so that's uh, kind mm -hmm. of the kinds of things that we would expect to see. 